Hello and welcome everyone to today's video. Uh, for the first time, I will show a classical uh, game of mine, which uh, I believe uh, could be useful, even though it was not uh, perfectly uh, played at all. So my opponent is uh, strong uh, Serbian Grandmaster Stojanovic in this game so let's see uh, i started with c4 e6 knight c3 d5 d4 knight of six so again this move order c takes e d bishop g5 bishop e7 e3 c6 so absolute uh, main line queen c2 knight 7 bishop d3 castle knight e2 rook e8 castles knight of eight f3 so everything is according to the to the mainline theory and bishop e6 was played here and i went for uh, rook a to e1 uh, yeah rook a to d1 is a little bit more common yeah rook e1 is a different little bit different move but with very similar ideas so like again open not uh, exact uh, opening moves are our main focus here but like uh, general plans ideas and, and structures so my opponent went rook c8 also pretty much the main move in the position just uh, bringing the rook into the game putting it uh, on the file of the of, uh, of white screen so when black is going to play c5 it will have some some extra power and here i played king to h1 and uh, as far as i remember this is the the last move of my preparation back then so the game was played 10 years ago so the the key thing here is that the d4 pawn is protected but it still doesn't mean that e4 is good so like uh, here we will uh, learn some other motif which which black can uh, do so for example here if we go e4 so takes takes if black does nothing then again uh, this position is just really nice for white but there is knight g4 which is kind of okay for black but uh, black can even achieve an advantage at least a slight advantage in this position uh, by playing the uh, thematic break of c5 this is just a very strong move and we really have to watch out uh, for this c5 if this works well for black he solved all his problems our central will be you know either lose its flexibility and like give up uh, some squares or like just completely uh, destroyed so what is the point here like it looks like that this pawn is uh, this move is just inviting d5 which is actually a serious uh, mistake because black plays c4 so that's the point here that this uh, bishop on d3 is trapped rook is protecting the pawn and uh, a very nice point that after d takes on e6 if black would uh, take on d3 then after ef7 king f7 there is queen b3 check and this is actually a better position for white because of the weak position of this king and probably this d3 pawn will be also an issue but yeah of course mainly the king is in trouble but uh, black can just play knight e6 and it's you know quite funny that simply this bishop still cannot go anywhere and now we are hanging on g5 it's just a clear advantage at this moment for uh, for black so best move probably is to take here and after knight g5 we have a weak pawn bishop c5 is coming black has absolutely no problems and, and it's just better here so so d5 is not working at all we have to make a move which you know normally already shows that something went uh, very wrong so if we give up this dark squared bishop and uh, in the next move we we have to move our center like which is not e5 and you know like bringing the knight or like some some immediately concrete solution then it's just normally bad so like for example d5 bishop d7 is this Kind of the textbook uh, position what we want to avoid black has a super strong bishop on f6 
knight will come to g6, e5, dark squares are under control, and our pieces are just absolutely not ready for the structure. And it's even hard to say how they can be ready. So, of course, this knight should be rather on f3 to control e5, maybe other one on c4. I mean, th these are just dreams. So, e5 is the best. And now black plays bishop h4, going out from uh, the attack with the tempo, and after d5. So of course white has some ideas here, like uh, bishop d5, knight d5, and uh, then if queen d5, then bishop c4, and attacking on the light squares. But black can simply take on e1, I believe that's the easiest. And after d takes e6, rook e6, rook e1, rook e5, even though White has two pieces for the for the rook. Um, black has two uh, extra pawns, and you know, this king is extremely safe. And you know, the position is so much easier to play with black, even though the computer rates this position as equal. I I would be pretty uncomfortable here with white. So e4 is not working. Therefore, king h1 very logical, anyways. Going out. Uh, from this diagonal, we have already seen this idea many times, so it's not a not a surprise. My opponent played knight d7. Also, the main move is uh, like trading the the bishops. I mean, of course, it's not a must, but it's like just just pretty logical. Also, just uh, he's trading the bishops. He has less space, and eventually. And most probably c5 uh, will be his idea and like if he would play c5 here then after d takes on c5 bishop c5 that is just a pin here so that's a little bit annoying so knight d7 logical i take queen e7 and i went knight g3 i mean mm, i'm not sure about this move to be honest if uh, if I would uh, play this game today, I would probably prefer knight to f4. It looks a little bit uh, uh, more fitting to, to what white wants to do, to be honest. I mean, knight g3 has its uh, own points, but... Uh, so knight f4, for example, uh, prevents c5 for now, because d5 pawn is a, is a problem, and it's also not uh, stopping the way of, of the g pawn. Of course, on the other hand, the, the knight uh, from g3 supports e4 very well. If the bishop leaves, there is knight f5. You know, if f file is opening, then there is no knight on f4 to block uh, the file. So, like, you know, both moves have has its uh, pluses and minuses. Uh, I would slightly prefer once again knight f4 today uh, because it simply feels like that uh, this g4 and pushing on the and gaining space on the king side is just just more important than uh, yeah so again it's it's critical to to check what happens uh, if we go for our central break unfortunately still not good at all d4 so as usual we want to take back with the pawn but c5 is again comes with a huge power so here we have no options i mean we don't want a bad structure after cd so we have to push and black's point is again to play c4, trapping this bishop and d. He can recapture in uh, in different ways. Probably, I, yeah, hard to say which one is the best here. Maybe with the queen. So even if the knight will attack the queen in the next move, uh, c d intermediate move uh, provides uh, black a great position. So I went knight g3, uh, and my opponent went c5. So yeah, basically it's probably the moment he has to do that because knight to g3 also provides a square for the bishop. So like uh, if opponent just plays something uh, not that careful, then uh, you know this uh, this idea of uh, of playing c4 is not uh, really good anymore. And now the other bishop is trapped. So. That can be pretty dangerous for for black. So c5, I mean, it's, it's very normal. In this position, still quite a few games, I believe. And here, uh, I played queen f2. 
and I I don't like this move to be honest. So it's uh, I think unnecessary. So it's like uh, giving Black some options to go wrong, but yeah, I mean it would have been just much more logical to play uh, D takes on C5 right away and then get the normal structure, which we will get eventually, but. So basically, the point of queen f2 is that c4 is very bad. So it's like I gave it double question mark simply because it's strategically awful. So I, uh, white is just playing uh, bishop c2 and uh, simply this e4. And first of all, problems on d5, but main idea is just to to crush black on the king side. Really, it's very easy for white. But c takes d4, which I evaluated as slightly better for white. I mean. It is easier to play with white, but yeah, it's also probably fine for black disposition. So like, of course, you know, because uh, the pawns are like these, so the central pawns make uh, white's bishop on d3 strong and this bishop on e3 not, e6 obviously worse. And like white has ideas like f4, f5 maybe, or maybe bringing the knight to f4 so in general. I saw some nice games with this exact structure where white won, but I feel it unnecessary to. I mean, yeah, kind of unnecessary to allow this this type of position for for black when you know the the character of of symmetry gives pretty good chances for equality. So yeah, probably just better to take. My opponent went knight f6, and yeah, basically with this uh, we just. Kind of transposed to this normal uh, and usual structure. So, yeah, this is also kind of fine for black. I mean, like uh, if we see the previous game, I mean, it, when g6 was played and uh, black pieces were like less optimally placed, now basically he cannot uh, hope for more. Like everything is pretty well placed. Queen is also active. Uh, white uh, has to yet stabilize a knight on uh, on d4. So, I mean, yeah, these these are like kind of strange positions again because engine is saying it is like equal, like almost almost just zeros. But again, between engines, these positions are for sure like holdable and everything, and you know. Objectively, it's of course uh, holdable, but what makes it super difficult for Black is that uh, the lack of you know constructive plans and just you know, in, in human games, in practical games, you know, with with the clock running and so on, it's just very hard to make you know pass moves which you know like don't will not make your position worse or or something like this. While you know White has all the time in the world like. Basically, as long as black is not playing d4, uh, black is not completely equal. So basically, we just have to make sure that black is not playing that move, and then we just uh, go around, play around, and it's uh, always a little bit better. Okay, so first move is uh, very logical now. Even though I had uh, two options, so one option is uh, is to play knight e2. And uh, put this knight on d4, or play knight b5, and put the other one on d4. I mean, it's it's not an easy choice. I am not sure which one is the better. I mean, I went for this knight uh, with the c knight to b5. Maybe to use the c file later uh, can be an idea. Black played bishop d7, very logical. Knight d4. He played knight e6, also very logical. I played knight f5. 92 would have been similar, and we traded. And yeah, black again cannot really complain about anything I have to say. So, like, he has a weakness on d5, you know, a potential weakness, I would say. So, like, it's extremely long time to um, to do anything with that pawn. And you know, even if I would do something like uh, this maneuver, with what we have already uh, saw, it's just putting very minimal pressure on that pawn. But the problem is that basically black's position is like 
ideal at this moment. So like the best for him is to just to say pass at every moment, but it's it's not really possible. So he went rookie five, good move, uh, and I went g4. So basically, yeah, it, it's hard to come up in, in such position with anything else. Like uh, I could try to play something like queen d2, maybe trading pieces on the c file. But you know, if we trade rooks, for example, so I don't know, I go like rook, uh, queen d2, sorry, my opponent can just go back. I'm almost sure that this would be Angie's first move. Then rook c1, maybe queen e7, so takes, takes. Rook c1, let's say. So if you reach such position, it is, I mean, super difficult to convert such position. I mean, of course, it's still great to play with white. And, you know, if you reach such position, I encourage you to play for, for 100 moves because, you know, who knows what happens. I mean, you can play queen c3, for example, then remaneuver the knight to f4, maybe eventually queen to d4. Later, maybe the bishop to b3 to attack d5, and it's always an idea to start pushing on the, on the king side. So we have ideas here, and even if the king uh, queens are traded, I, I wanna basically exactly uh, I want an endgame without the queens. So basically, exactly the same position without the queens, I, I managed to win at some moment. Of course, you know, time travel of opponent and stuff was also a factor, but. Uh, So yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just objectively speaking, it's more critical if I start to play on the king side, like uh, g4. So, you know, the center center is closed. Opponent has no counterplay on the queen side. It's well controlled. And my pawn on e3 is my only weakness, which, which I can uh, easily protect. So black went rook e8, and again, I am not sure about my move. I, I don't really like this move. I played h4, which is fine, but it looks uh, inaccurate. So this is what uh, what I want to maybe push g5, maybe f4 later if the knight cannot uh, come to e4, and just gain space on the king side and create a second weakness. That's very important. Because with one weakness only on d5, it, it will be not really possible to win. But what is the problem? I mean, the problem is that this h4 allows queen e7. And I was looking at the game today, and like I, I, I simply did not understand that why I did not play rook e2 first, and just to cover in this position the pawn. And uh, computer is suggesting all sorts of weird moves here, but I mean, in human terms, I believe knight c2 is the only reasonable one. To, to protect the pawn, and yeah, I mean, then I have to again, like, rookie two, rookie one, and then back with the knight to d4. So, yeah, it, it, it was not ideal. How I did it, I believe it would have lost uh, some time for me, but yeah, my opponent went h6, and uh, now I went rookie two. So now I can meet queen e7 comfortably with rook f1. And yeah, once again, I mean, this this is not really checkmating attack. It's just you know trying to to get some some pawn moves from black. So I have some potential squares for my pieces, like f5 maybe if he, he plays g6 at some moment, then queen can come to f4. So such things. And yeah, it's again not so easy to wait and do nothing. So he went g6. Not so sure about this move. Computer thinks it's completely fine. But again, it's it's moving the pawns there, giving me g5, h5 at some moment. So I played rook f1. So this was uh, absolutely part of the plan to to overprotect on e3. So now my queen is free to go. Uh, black played a6, and I played queen g3. So we can say that I did absolutely nothing. I mean, really, I, I mean, I managed to blockade the pawn and. Since that time, okay, I pushed uh, these pawns, which is like, you know, normal idea, I would say. And uh, then I protected my e3, e3 pawn with the rooks. I mean, still you know, I'm a little bit stuck here with the e3 pawn, so I have a lot to do to, to create any threats or something. But black is already kind of running out of useful moves. And just to, to, 
to stand and like not do anything once again is not not really easy so like that's really for the highest level you know where people are can can handle such positions with ease but i would also feel very uncomfortable with black and my opponent uh, played the usual uh, and logical follow-up of a6 to trade this bad bishop but even doing this is a very serious uh, mistake because after bishop takes some b5 a b suddenly there are uh, some you know other pawn weaknesses so basically not only d5 but like now any end game without the queens is very unpleasant because protecting this b5 pawn you know which could have been simply staying on a6 is a huge difference so yeah it was already a huge mistake instead you know King g7, queen d6, queen e7. Even though with queen e7, you already have to be a little bit careful about f4, for example. Those, of course, king g7, I mean, not really the move that you want to play, you know, some potential knight f5, opening the g5 with check at some moment. So, you know, it's possible to see ghosts uh, here. So, bishop b5, I took, took, queen f4. So already pretty unpleasant. King g7 and h5. Another problem of bishop d7. You can see now that bishop is not controlling f5. So if the pawn leaves uh, g6 square, then uh, knight f5 is, is coming with, uh, with a very serious attack. And basically in the next move of my opponent was already the losing one. He played the uh, queen to c4. Not easy to give a great suggestion, but probably b4. You know, at least the pawn is not hanging from the knight. Still, uh, white's position is very nice. I play something like king g2 with ideas like uh, bringing the rook over to h1, then hg and uh, attacking h6 pawn, for example. But it was still better than queen c4, since it basically uh, loses by force. hg6, fg6, uh, rook c2. So I open the seventh rank. My rook is ready to to enter. So queen d3 was played. Queen a2 is uh, just losing. I mean, it's pretty similar to the game. I mean, I will just show that okay, I, I would have given rook c7 check. Rook, uh, this rook has to go obviously because other one cannot uh, because it is falling like this. And if this rook goes, then there is g5 and. As you will see, it is pretty similar to the game. So in the game, queen d3, rook c7, check. Now this this rook again has I mean, it's the same motif. So rook e7, queen e5. So rook 5 to e7 was played. And here actually. I played knight e6, which is fine. I mean, there, there were other solutions, but uh, I don't necessarily want to show to uh, to be able to ask a question from you later. So king f7 and g5. So yeah, this was my my idea, basically, if to bring the knight to to g5 with the check. Also, queen f6 is a threat now, so basically black cannot do much. But actually, he could have. So that it's an absolutely amazing. Uh, there is an absolutely amazing idea here from black. I mean, it's not saving black, but I am not completely sure that if I would have found uh, it during the game that how I should play. So he played hg, which is losing uh, in a straightforward way and like you know, looks like the only move. But that is rook takes c7, extremely surprising move. And I mean, simply, I believe both uh, we both did not consider it seriously because of queen takes on f6 check, king g8, and uh, white uh, takes the rook and up an extra piece. But absolutely unbelievable that after rook takes e3, it's not a winning position. Like, it is extremely hard to believe because the queen can give millions of checks. We can trade, I mean, or I can take a rook. Uh, I can move my rook, but nothing is winning here. So the position is simply not winning. I mean, it's very, very hard to believe, but uh, yeah, just uh, just incredible. So after rook takes e3, of course, black is not taking back, but plays queen f1, king h2, 
queen f2 and white cannot escape from the checks. If uh, white tries, then can even lose the game. It's a very nice check, king g4 and h5 checkmate. So this would have been an amazing uh, resource. Uh, objectively speaking, although after even after this move, queen takes c7, king e6, and then queen b6 is winning uh, the game. And on king d7, there is also like one very difficult move, this rook c1, which I would uh, should have found. So it would have made my task uh, more difficult, certainly. But yeah, it's pretty difficult to see for time trouble. So hg was played, knight g5, king g7. So now we are close to move 40, so I repeated once the position. And here, if you want, you can stop the video and uh, and find the winning move for white. I hope you, you managed. I actually failed here because, I mean, I, I don't know. So I, I thought I have two winning moves and basically so it doesn't really matter and like uh, let's play you know which which is for sure good but like actually the other one was good so i played queen to d6 huge mistake this very nice move of queen e5 would have finished the game so there is the pin here there is the pin here uh black cannot do anything in this position so he cannot protect the rook uh, anyway because king f 8, queen f6, and if he takes on c7, then queen c7. So now he cannot go backwards anywhere because there is move uh, queen to f7. And if he goes king to h6, knight f7, knight d6, for example, is one way to, to win uh, the game. So queen e5 was winning. I played queen d6. I mean, absolutely the same idea, but there is knight g8. I mean, it, I was completely shocked uh, after this move. So it just protects the rook on e7 and the game goes on. So I managed to find that the best way here. And so knight e6. And I had this knight f4 move, which was uh, which was kind of important. So it, there are still pins. The queen is under attack. Queen f5 has to be played. And after trade, uh, I managed to pick up a uh, pawn. Okay, the end game was still not uh, completely easy, but I managed to manage to convert. This is another story, not really a topic of this uh, of this video, but yeah, I mean the game should have been uh, over by uh, by queen e5. Okay, so I just wanted to show that you know this uh, this idea of pushing the pawns a little bit on the king side, and you know just just slowly improving and leaving black to do his things you know it's it's much simpler to play with white even without having like a very clear cut plan uh, and even with computers saying it is just equal I, I believe it's extremely far from from reality i hope you found uh, this video useful and uh, hope to see you for uh, for some other time with uh, with new videos